I don't know why you, you decide to go out there and get in the middle of all this. Tell me about this, this latest incident. Well, Fetterman's very pertinent to this because this was in Pennsylvania. So I went to Penn State University and I was speaking at an event called Uncensored America. And that's a student organization that's at a few universities. And they booked myself and Gavin McInnes to go there and do a comedy show. And it wasn't just a comedy show. We were both doing about 30 minutes of comedy. And we are going to do an open dialogue Q&A. So almost like a, a debate. So if students wanted to come and they had different ideas... Come and ask cool. questions. Yeah, we would mm -hmm. answer any questions that people wanted. But no, Stu, like literally, not only were the administrators saying that we we're abhorrent and, you know, white supremacists, the students were literally radicalized to under any circumstance to shut this event down. They, so much so, they had protesters at every entrance. So one of the reasons the show got, the show got canceled is because the ticketed uh, customers couldn't even get in because there was so much uh, hoopla at the entrances. So this was a coordinated attack to stop free speech. And at this thing, you know, if you play the clips, they constantly called me a fascist. And I believe, I'm not an expert in fascism, but I think Benito Mussolini described fascism as a merger of corporation and state. Mm. And I'm anti-establishment. I don't want the, you know, corporations to run America, which they already are. So I'm not a fascist. So these kids are just radicalized, confused. And I'm almost empathetic to them because they're, they're just so, you know, low IQ right now. Right. And, and like... If there's anything that's close to fascism in the story you just told me, it's shutting people up, right? It's telling people that have different opinions that they can't speak. One one thousand percent. I mean, it's like what is it? there's an old saying: "Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me." <laughs> right. It's like did nobody ever teach these kids that? Yeah, and especially on college campuses. I think this is one of the reasons why this is so disturbing. Uh, this anti-speech movement at college campuses is because. The whole thing's designed to explore crazy views. You know, the reason why they have tenure for teachers is so they can have these views that are out of the mainstream and try to talk to the kids about them. They love utilizing this when they're promoting communism. They love oh, the tenure thing then, but they don't want, for some reason now they don't want other voices, yourself, you know, everybody really on the right, anybody who's even leaning right, they don't even want you on campus. Yeah, Stephen Davis at UC Berkeley, his event got, uh, they call him MAGA Hulk, he's a turning point ambassador, they shut down his event, they shut down, you know, any conservative voice, they basically shut down the event, so it's really kind of a sad, uh, harsh reality, when these kids go to these schools, it's pure indoctrination, mm -hmm. so maybe they go in apolitical or non-political, and they get radicalized by their, you know, women and gender studies teacher, <laughs> and then it's just off to the races with hate, and they're the ones that are actually, they say that we're full of hate, they're the ones that are literally hawking loogies at us, assaulting me, they're the ones that are filled with hate. Now, you mentioned that they're hawking loogies at you, mm -hmm. I, we have some very revolting footage of this. Uh, but before we get to it, can you kind of set it up? Like, what was happening? Why were you in the middle of these people? Okay, so how it worked was uh, we got there. Gavin and I got there at, like, 5.30 p.m., and they put us inside of the, uh, you know, the big... We were in a big lecture hall, like mm -hmm. a regular classroom is where we were going to do the speech. And then they, we had a little green room. It was just kind of a small classroom next to it. So they had the cameras, had everything set up. And all these protesters are at every exit. So if you just want to walk out, you're going to run into these protesters. And so what I thought is, you know, I'm a content you know, creator, of course. I'm like, well, let me go outside and just ask them some questions. Like, just even have an open dialogue and say, what is your problem with me? You know, why don't you like me? You know, what, what do you have against me? As soon as I got out there, it was like a dog that's chasing a car. <laughs> Once a dog catches up to the car, they have no idea what to do with a bumper. Right. And that's exactly what it was. When I went out there, it was just, ah! Just, you know, yelling in my face, nothing coherent, <laughs> and absolute madhouse. Now, you, what did you expect? To, did you really expect that they were going to engage you in some civil manner, or did you kind no, of just think it would be funny? I thought it would be funny, I mean, of course, and I yeah. thought it would be interesting, but the fact that I would get assaulted or spit on, mm. or some of the stuff they said that, that I should have been aborted, they said they made fun of my mother being, you know, passed away. I mean, they said the most oh disgusting things. I mean, I, I get that on the internet quite a bit, so that's not new, but when you get it in person, it's different. And, and like, this is the other thing, is they want to use fear and intimidation tactics. They have their face covered. That was the other weird thing. It's like if you're really, you know, if you really stand by what you're saying, show your face. But it was a lot of kids, and I would say half of them were hiding behind masks, yelling and screaming so that they couldn't be identified. They just care about COVID too much. You know, they don't want to spread. <laughs> well, speaking spread the of virus. that, you know, the, yeah. the girl that spit on me, I definitely have COVID now. I'm sure I have it oh, from good. her spit. So. Good. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <into it. laughs> um, uh, let's uh, see the footage if, if we dare. <laughs> That's a salt, brother. Dehydrated, but is this is what I mean? We, you know, there as people were watching this, you see her. She's looking at you like she's possessed. 
Yeah. Like a demon is inside of her as she plans this spitting routine where she spits on the shoulder of your suit, which is a very, I don't know, I mean, in some ways a refined place to spit. Yeah, no, at least it wasn't on my face. And like, yeah. that's what people were saying. They're like, you should press charges against her. You know, I'm gonna, we're going to end up suing uh, Penn State because they limited free speech and it's a public university. So, they, you know, they could be liable to a civil rights lawsuit. But her spitting on me, if it would have been, you know, a 300-pound Antifa guy, I might not have reacted the same. But the fact that it's a little girl, it's like, let me just laugh. Let me just be jovial because that's what actually makes him oh, they mad. Hate they hate that. They cannot oh. stand you. If you're laughing and having a good time... They hate that more than anything. It's one of my favorite parts of what you do is that you you always do it with a smile. That you you're never you never look angry. You're just out there with the biggest smile in the world, and you're filming yourself, and you're just saying, "Hey, like, look what's going on. Can you believe what you're seeing right now?" It's that you feel like you're almost there, and that. I, but I don't have to have spit on me, which is nice. Well, it's basically like a reality TV, and that's really where I kind of made my name is by culture jamming, just putting up a mirror to the absurdity of the left wing ideologies that you know all these kids are under. Yeah. So all I had to do is just put a camera in selfie mode, and you're like, "This is what these kids are doing," and now it gets millions of hits on the internet. So <laughs> it's it's not that hard to expose these people. Tell me about you getting uh, what happened with the Dallas City Council. Oh my like, gosh. I, I, I was watching a video of yours and it seems like they have like developed most of the time they now spend is just how to stop you from coming to these meetings. <laughs> no, seriously, they have they run like a hundred fifty million dollar budget, even more than that, and they're spending hours and they spent uh, over an hour and a half at their last meeting talking about how they can change the public comment. And the reason why they kind of shoot themselves in the foot is because if they limit the public comment, which they don't want me to speak at, and they mention me, you know, they say Alex Stein is causing a disturbance. But even the people that hate me the most, they say, well, it's only three minutes, and he can only speak once a month. But still. Me speaking for three minutes once a month is making them change their whole entire meeting procedure and theoretically uh, and likely that they're <laughs> going to limit the free speech and maybe they're, they're, they're uh, talking about making it just one day of the month where they have a public comment portion and getting rid of it. So I actually feel kind of guilty that I'm causing them to do this. And then California as well put in legislation where they can, uh, you know, get rid of disruptive speakers, as they call it, because there are so many people speaking at school boards. So for me, listen, Stu, I'm going to be honest with you. I love the clicks. I just got verified on Instagram. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm, thank very you. nice. Well, I'm saying I love all that. But I'm not virtue signaling when I say this. My favorite thing is when people message me and they send me a video and they're like, this is me at my city council. This is me at my school board meeting. That makes me feel the best because I feel like that's how we win this culture war. Because I can't stand up for everybody. You can't stand up for everybody every night. People need to stand up for themselves. So if I can encourage somebody to do that, then I actually do feel good about that. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think I knew that you could go to a public meeting mm -hmm. and make comments. But like, and you see those videos would, would pop out every once in a while. Until you, I saw you doing it this often, though, I didn't realize how accessible or how often it occurred. I mean, you, while yes, a lot of the stuff you're doing is funny or it's trying to illustrate the absurdity of the moment, you're making a lot of times really important points. And you're seeing now people from all across the country who maybe be inspired by your videos or some other people. And they're going and they're making maybe not as much comedy, but making real points and trying to get their voice out there. And you nailed it. Like, you don't have to be a goofball like me and wear a women's <laughs> bathing suit. You go up there and speak earnestly because it is cathartic when people go and speak. Even if their speech doesn't go viral or doesn't even go the way they plan, they always feel better because you get it's kind of like that monkey off your back. And the other thing, too, is, is Jose Vega. There, there's a really I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was the guy that protested. Tested AOC in New York City at her town hall, hmm. and Jose Vega that went super viral. Where you know they all yelled at her and they called her a Ukraine, uh, you know, a leftist, basically war hawk or however you want to describe it. And he sent me a message that I was encouraged by your big booty Latina video <laughs> to go call out AOC. So you don't know, you never know what encourages somebody to go stand up for themselves. That's true, you never know. Uh, tell me about what you're doing this weekend. You're going to be in Florida. I'm going to be in Florida. I'm uh, doing the Orlando Improv. If you guys want to buy tickets, there's still a few for sale. It'll be this Thursday night. It's going to be insane. I'm going to be with some other great comedians. But let me tell you something. I've been on the go. I've been traveling. I think that's like, you know, how... How do I get my message across is going out there and creating content, but not just in Dallas and uh, seeing the world. So this is just going to be another example of I hope the, the, the Orlando Improv have gotten some calls to have this event shut down, too. But I don't think they will. So. <laughs> and then you're doing some big, four, what is it, 48-hour oh live? Oh, my gosh, you tell me about yes. This. No, and you're going to watch it. I'm going to send you the links, too. No, yeah, we're yeah, doing them. Yeah. 
a 48 hour live stream at the content house and this is going to be in Orlando, Florida. So if you guys are, you know, not doing anything, it'll be on the Compound Media uh, YouTube page and we're going to be live for 48 hours in multiple rooms. We're going to have a swimming pool, we're going to have costumes, we're going to have it's <laughs> going to be insane. Vladimir Zelensky might show up on Zoom. Oh, sure. really? Oh, and I want to say this, I forgot to make this point. Yeah. For the people at home, the jacket that the co-ed spit on, we're going to auction that off and all <laughs> proceeds are going to go to Vladimir Zelensky because we need to give another 10 billion dollars <laughs> to the UK. I think you'll get $10 billion for it. I hope. Yeah, I mean, you should, at least. At, at least, least. 9.5. Compound is uh, Anthony Cumia's That's Cumia, uh, company, yeah, right? Opie and Anthony. Oh, and, and, very cool. And he's a you know legendary broadcaster. But this is the other thing is you know they get censored like crazy. So make sure to subscribe to Blaze TV. Subscribe to Compound Media. There's a few media companies that are uh, still allow free speech. And uh, luckily, I'm a part of one of them. And uh, there's just very few out there. No, we love having you, Alex. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, Alex Stein, host of Conspiracy Castle. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the program and uh, taking that loogie. It was very impressive. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a Zapruder film. It yeah. was really impressive. Uh, thank you so much for doing the it. The spit heard round the world. <laughs>